Mohamed Morandi is a professor at Tehran University. He joins us now from the Iranian capital. Mohamed Morandi, what does Hassan Rouhani do next if this does not calm down? Well, the numbers of uh, protesters have decreased uh, uh, a lot because uh, people are distancing themselves, the protesters, from the rioters. So it's mostly riots that have been taking place now. President Rouhani has uh, spoken last night in another uh, meeting and said that uh, some of this is being instigated by uh, countries uh, that are hostile towards Iran. And uh, social media applications are also being used, as we in Iran are witnessing, for example, to uh, tell, teach people how to use uh, Molotov cocktails or, or make them. Okay, just let and, me stop you there um, because you've made, you've made two key Facebook points there, or other Mohammed social media just to interrupt you. Instigated by whom precisely? Sure. Well, I, he, I don't think he was very clear, but I think he mentioned the United States and he said a number of other countries. So um, I think that he's probably alluding to U.S. allies such as Israel and Saudi Arabia, but uh, the country that he mentioned apparently was the United States. But one thing that is important is that Saudi, um, social media applications don't cooperate with Iran, unlike in the West. For example, in London in 2009 when there were the riots, or in the United States, social media is answerable to the government. In the case of Iran, uh, these uh, Western-based uh, groups are calling on people to attack police stations. They're teaching them how to produce bombs, uh, yet they're not being blocked or stopped by any Western country. And I think that if European countries, and in particular England, they want to improve relations with Iran, this is not the way forward. Also, BBC Persian and the VOA, they are trying to fuel tension through the way in which they are covering this. So there um, does seem to I, just be Just to stop a, you there, just to stop you there, because I do the have to stop to, you there, Mr. Morandi. Um, yeah. I'm not wishing to talk about my own backstory. I used to work at the BBC. I have colleagues who worked on BBC Persian. There is no way on the planet that BBC Persian would instigate violence. Neither would the VOA. I don't know anyone that works at the VOA. But I can promise That's you. That's not what I no, said. Hold on. I did I not say yet. instigate violence. BBC Persian I would did not, not be say involved that. No, I in said propagating that they anything are like that. It just wouldn't. I just want to ask you one they, more point, though. You're saying that these social media are platforms. They involved. You're saying they these social involved. media they are platforms. deeply involved in trying to promote greater tension. No, they're not. You're saying social media platforms are controlled elsewhere, yes, and yet the government in Tehran is blocking social media platforms. It can't have it both ways. Excuse me, but uh, those social media platforms are not controlled in Tehran. They're controlled in foreign countries. And those countries have the ability to stop uh, them from inciting violence and to promote violence and to teach people how to produce bombs. That is obvious. When it comes to your countries in the West, then things are the other way around. In 2009, during the London riots, the prime minister at that time, and, and people can look this up, was talking about shutting down social media. And they also cooperated, social media cooperated with the police to arrest these people. Okay. So talking about such, talking about academic, shutting down social and media I, and actually with, doing I it. Watch, I watch are social media things. and I watch and, and I not see here, BBC Persian. We are not here to talk about what the British government did or did not do with social media in the context of the UK. But to take you right back to point number one. You basically seem to be saying that these protests are diffusing on their own and they are becoming less. Can I put it to you that that is demonstrably not the case? From the Caspian Sea, from the Caspian Sea in the north to Izay in the south, these demonstrations are real, they are ongoing, and they are current. And for the government to say, nothing here, move on, we don't have a problem, is precisely the wrong interpretation because of a different agenda that it looks no as if... No one said that. And by the way, I'm not the government, and don't uh, attribute by word uh, the government to me. I teach at the University of Tehran, and you invited me on this show. If you want a government official, go and invite a government official. I talk to you as an academic. I know what's going on in this country. I'm more fluent in Persian than you are. 
And since you worked in the BBC, then you are definitely biased. But without a doubt, when the Iranian president says that the United States is involved in these issues, then there's something important going on there. He is the elected president of the Iranian people. He won 57% of the vote with a very high turnout in this country, unlike Saudi Arabia, which has no democracy and the United States supports it and has no problem with it. Iran is constantly under attack by the Western media and it, this is something that's not new to anyone. And any student who wants to go and look at how uh, BBC Persian and VOA Persian functions, they're, um, they're open to do it. It's a very good idea actually to do research on that and how that on, uh, through discourse they produce a narrative that uh, enables people to move towards greater uh, hostility. That's, in my opinion, something that's be beyond a doubt. But you can think otherwise. For the record, Mr. Morandi, I do think otherwise. I am not biased and I do not work for the BBC. I work for Al Jazeera English Good. here in Doha. But thank you very much and for joining us here. I am an academic. Here. Thank you for joining us here on the News Hour.